This is Walter Leite, and in this video, I will demonstrate how to perform an analysis of heterogeneity of treatment effects using the um, Reynolds forests, uh, more specifically the causal forest method um, implemented in the GRF package. Um, now, for this, I will use part of the data that was shown in the paper heterogeneity of treatment effects of a video recommendation system for algebra that was presented in the 2022 uh, ACM conference on learning at scale. So uh, I say part of the data because um, I used just um, some of the variables and also um, for that paper, I used multiple imputation to handle missing data. In this example, I just used single imputation. I also removed the, the student ID and teacher ID to preserve the anonymity of the data. Now, uh, we start by loading the file. So this example uses data from um, a large study of a recommendation system for algebra. So it's a video recommendation system where students using the um, algebra nation system were being recommended videos. Um, if they're in the treatment group, they would be recommended videos using uh, a reinforcement learning algorithm. If they were in the control group, they were just recommended the next video in the sequence. Um, so here treatment status refers to what they were recommended um, the video uh, using reinforcement learning. Now, um, the question here is, is there heterogeneity of treatment effects on the post-test? Uh, and does that heterogeneity depend on these covariates here that we have? Um, so you use causal forces to investigate this situation. Now, um, the first thing I will do is split the data into training and testing. Uh, so here I'm using 50% of the data set for training, 50% for testing. And the importance here is to get results to generalize better. Um, so I will first, and I'm, I'm converting the outcome here to this course. Now, um, first I will fit the causal forest on the training data um, using these covariates here, which are listed over here under the X argument. My Y is post-test and the W is the treatment status. And W hat is the propensity score, but here we don't have a propensity score because this was an experimental study, so there was random assignment. Therefore, I'm saying that the propensity score is just the mean treatment status, um, so which is the proportion treated. We, this is basically saying the it's just like random assignment. Um, you know, so see the proportion treated is 0.51, so just a little bit bigger than 0.5 because of natural variability in random assignment. Um, I'm using my hyperparameters here is a thousand trees um, with four variables per tree, okay, and um, minimal node size is 50. Okay, so we'll run this. Load the variable, the function first. Um, okay, so library, GRF. Okay, now I have causal forest. And here. So I, I train the causal forest. And here I get um, variable importance, which just numbers the variables. So I want to see which variables are important. So what I will do is use the, the function variable importance to take out this 
measure of variable importance and I will label it with the variable names. So now I know that the most important variable in explaining the conditional average treatment effect is pre the pretest, pretita. Uh, no surprise there. Um, but then I also find that the, the second most important is the number of absences of the student and then the percent distance, which is the per this data was from spring 2022, so the, during the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, this percent distance is the percentage of time that the student in that academic year uh, was doing distance classes or as compared to in-person classes. Um, I'm going to use a criteria here to select important variables, which mean, which is uh, the importance is greater than the media importance. Um, so using that criteria, I select these variables as the important pre theta sex, absent days, free reduced lunch, percent distance learning mode learning mode would be on campus at the end of the semester if they finished on campus or uh, online black hispanic um, okay and then on campus um, indicator of the primary mode of uh, instruction for that year now um and I also will estimate the conditional average treatment effects using the function predict. Um, note here that I'm using the, the model, the rhythm force for the training data, but I'm predicting with the test data. So I'll run that and I get that um, the conditional average treatment effects vary from 0.15 to 0.3. Okay. Um, Now I will run, I will scale the post test for the test data. So it's standardized. And then I will run the random forest, causal forest of the, of the test data, the same hyperparameters. Okay. And using that, I can obtain the average treatment effect from the test data. So the functional average treatment effect gives me an estimate. The estimate is 0.269 with standard error of 0 0.04. Um, now in the next step, I will find um, which of the variables, the predictors um, predict the conditional average treatment effect. Uh, I not, I'm not testing all the predictors, not all the predictors, just those that I deemed important because they had importance that are greater than the median. Um, so I'm selecting those predictors here. And then I'm going to run the best linear projection function that will predict the conditional average treatment effect. Now here it turns out that using the test data, none of the my predictors significantly predicted the conditional average treatment effect. Um, so these were not, um, I found that they were not significantly related to the conditional average treatment effect. Um, but yeah, this is what I would look, would look for. Uh, if any of these were significant, I would conclude that, um, that the, the conditional average treatment effect varied uh, between the uh, across the values of it, these predictors, you know, many of these are binary. So, I would, for for uh, for example, um, sex, I would conclude that there would be a difference in treatment effects between males and females. But absent days, it's continuous. So, I would conclude that, you know, the 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 average treatment effect depending on the number of absence days. But here I can't make this conclusion because these are not statistically significant, as you can see from the p-values here, being greater than 0.05. So that's it. That's how to run 
an analysis of heterogeneity of treatment effects using the GRF package in R.